So we'll get started here. We have three outstanding founder CEOs uh, who've come all the way to Silicon Valley uh, from India. You know, you know, we, 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 build, we build unicorns in spite of the environment. <laughs> so, so, so let's get going. <laughs> so, you know, what I wanted you all to do is give, give, give us a sense of the scale, uh, the growth rate, and the opportunity for each of you in your businesses. Uh, Rohit, let's start with you. Sure. You can so, tell us a little bit about, you know, where you're at. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Rohit. I, I co-founded a company called Snapbeam. Uh, we are the largest online marketplace in India. Uh, essentially, what we do is we connect uh, local and small businesses to sell products to consumers. We've been doing this for the last three and a half years. And I think, you know, all of us have been blown away by the scale at which this is happening in India and the pace of movement, the number of internet users in India. Are, India is the second largest internet population in the country already. Within, within three years of start, we, we already have 200,000 businesses, small businesses, who've listed their products with us and are selling products to consumers, selling over $4 billion of products every year. And that's all incremental for all these 200,000 businesses. And I think that's not enough because, you know, with the growth rate at which, which things are growing, uh, you know, we feel over the next five years, uh, we will, okay. <laughs> I think we will, we will end up having, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, okay, uh, could I request as many of you all inside at least to be quiet? Okay, thank you. So uh, I think over the, uh, because Sorry. I think the scale is already pretty fascinating in India, but what is, what is even more exciting for us is the pace at which this is growing. We are pretty confident that over the next five years, we will have 10 million businesses who will be online with us, hundreds of millions of customers, and you know, I think over 50 billion of transactions will be happening online on our platform. So you're at four billion run rate right now? Yeah. How many employees at Snapdeal? We have, we have about 7,000 people in the company. And, and what are you growing at over the last three years? <laughs> I, so it's very interesting in India, you know, I think when, when we talk to uh, travel to developed markets, most people measure growth rate in terms of percentages. I think in India, we're still at a stage where we measure it in terms of how many X per month. How many X how per many month? X per year. So over the last three years, we've been growing at 400% year on year, which is 4X every year. 400% a year. Great. Uh, awesome. Naveen, can you give us a sense of where you're at at Inmobi? No, absolutely. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure to be here on, the, on this platform. You know, I, and, you know one of the things, uh, entrepreneurship is all about how do, you, uh, you know, how do you optimize and prioritize in tough situations. So I think this is clearly an interesting <laughs> way to try and do something today. Absolutely. Uh, how do you keep people entertained uh, while you can't be heard? It's, a, it's an interesting one. The, um, you know, for us, we are a, we are a mobile advertising player. Uh, we are one of the largest players on the planet today uh, on mobile advertising. The, we, are a, we are a hardcore product and tech company. Um, you know, we have, uh, we have businesses now in roughly over 100 plus countries uh, with offices in about 24 countries in the world today. Um, we are, we show advertising, so all the, all the applications out there today um, are made free because we can, you know, we can help monetize those applications. Um, so we roughly show advertising to about 1.5 billion people on a very, very regular basis. Um, it's, it's far more active than monthly active users. It's probably every week or so, 1.5 billion people would see advertising through Inmobi platform itself. Uh, you know, we are about a thousand people in the company. We have not, we fundamentally believe that the growth in our business is not people driven, but the scale of the business has to grow on its own. And therefore, you know, how, how can we, uh, you know, how can we automate more and more in order to scale the company? We, um, we, one of the things that we hold very close to ourselves is not the fact that we, we just want to build a business. But we fundamentally believe that advertising as an ecosystem is completely broken. Um, we, we are all of us out here suffer through bad advertising and we complain about it on a very regular basis. And so as a company, it's our mission to make, to make people love advertising. 
and that's the one that we are working on. We took that mission on us about two to three years ago, and we work really hard, um, and we think we know we have certain solutions in order to do so, but one of the things that we, we will do certainly for sure is in the, over the next few years, we will ensure that people see amazing value from advertising across the globe, across hundreds of countries, uh, because we fundamentally believe that we can innovate and disrupt the way advertising happens today in the world. Great, so you're touching 1.5 billion users uh, yeah. on a very frequent basis. I know you guys have pivoted into a mobile, uh, much more mobile-centric approach going forward, right? Yeah, so yeah, so the idea of advertising being in the background was a very, right. it was, a, was a notion that we didn't necessarily like too much beyond a certain stage. So we tried to bring it in, in the front um, and, and made it far more user-centric, and so that's our approach on trying to figure out how we can get to make advertising very, very beautiful. Great, thanks. And so Vijay, you know, you guys have been on a tear redefining payment wallets, uh, digital wallets. Tell us a little bit about what, what y'all are up to. I think... Uh, uh, Hi. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Speaking closer. Yeah. So if you look at India, uh, if you look at India, we are known for two things. One is the volume of people that we have and amount of transaction that we do in the cash. So country and all our countrymen do not respect anything till the time it is seen in the cash. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> so uh, as a countryman, we are all about transactions using cash as a currency. And uh, I think the country has problems like corruption, pro country has problems like financial inclusion, country has problems like uh, loans not being made available to people. And there are tens of thousands of problems that originate because there is no digital platform at all when the transactions are happening. Uh, PTM started way back in 2011, and maybe that, that is not such a long time period, but it was possible because smartphones could exist. And today, we are about 105 million users who use Paytm Wallet. And uh, incidentally, every month we are doing something above of 75 million transactions. Uh, and this is half of the all Visa, Master, Rupee combined transactions in the country. So in a short span of time, we've been able to reach half of those transactions, and we hope to tip Visa Master Networks as a transaction platform, as a volume, by this year end. Uh, I, and, and I think it is very possible because the kind of consumer adaptation that we found out is incredible. Typically, when you see world and technology companies which have more than 100 million users, you mostly count American companies or Chinese companies. I'm very proud that as Paytm, we have become one of those companies which can count 100 million users of an Indian technology platform out there. And uh, number-wise, we, we, we effectively got license to run a payment wallet in 2013. So 2014 is that we've started in uh, running a wallet more, uh, more for consumer use cases. And today, we are doing something like 12,000 crore rupees of run rate transactions on the wallet. And that is, that is all possible because the country has this inherent need and we as people are trying to solve the problem of financial inclusion by a virtue of wallet as an instrument there. Got and uh, You got a the, banking license as well recently. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> I think RBI has been very kind and it has issued a payment bank license that license allows us to offer deposits and interest and nearly as much the bank, bank allows, except that as a business model, we can't do the loaning part of the business out of consumer deposits. Now, the, the best part I like about our opportunity is that if you look at 100 million people and the number of transactions that we're doing, we effectively can do 10x in next three years itself. I mean, effectively, the country can grow beyond 500 million transactions a month within three years of existence. And then we will become one of the largest company on the planet Earth to have that kind of transaction volume. And this all will be possible because Indian consumers have happened now. Earlier, the technology companies that used to be built used to be for international customers. So IT companies upgraded to the domestic product companies, and now the mobile is leading it for the masses of Indian consumers. So we're very hopeful that by 2018, we should be having half a billion Indians on our platform. Half a billion Indians on your platform. Yeah. That's your goal. And Naveen, how many billions on your platform? Already one and a half, and what's the growth looking like? We, we, our aim is that we should touch every, everyone who uses a mobile phone in the world, 
and we should be able to um, impact their decision making in one way or the other. Uh, it's it's 100% coverage. Got it. Okay, so you know, given the context of you know the startup connect uh, and you know US India connect, I wanted to ask you guys uh, a question each. What would you like Silicon Valley to know about the Indian startup ecosystem that may not be you know well known already? And then one thing that you like in Silicon Valley that you think you know we should adopt in our ecosystem. Let me start with you, Vijay. Maybe you can tell us a, you know something that we should adopt from Silicon Valley that you admire. You know that you see here. Yeah, I think uh, one thing is very vibrant here that technology is mainstream. Even in Bangalore, where it is expected that it is so-called Silicon Valley or Silicon Alley of India, if not Valley, mm -hmm. uh, we we believe that technology hasn't become that mainstream. People who are working for startups, they have social issues like th their families won't know what to tell their prospective spouses that where this company this kid of mine works. So here, when you're working in a startup, you sort of are alpha human. And in India, when you're working for a startup, it is not assumed that you are an alpha. It is assumed that you might have not got a job in a big established company. That is why you're choosing so a So you startup. feel, in spite of all the growth we've had, there's still a little bit of this overhang of the there's, social... There's, I, I, I would say that the best part is that students at least do not know their families are yet to change. Got it. And that is, I think, that we should take back from here. And Naveen, how about you? What would you want to adopt from Silicon Valley? You know, what, what Vijay just said is a very, very core issue, by the way. And I'll build on this and I'll also add one more point to it. But what Vijay is basically saying is a, is a societal acceptance of failure, uh, which is what Silicon Valley is very, very open and, and famous for. I think the societal acceptance for failure is not yet necessarily there and well understood by the people. The societal acceptance of working in the challenger categories and the challenger companies as against the incumbent ca companies is still not seen as a, as a mark of success, whereas it should be because I'm pretty sure our bar of hiring is extremely hard because we always have limited resources and limited avenues to, to take the number of people that we take. So I think at some level that, that fundamental change should happen within the country. I think the, uh, if I were to add one more piece to it, uh, and your question is more around what is it that we can learn, I think Silicon Valley uh, you know, shows and showcases the ability of free thinking. I think the free thinking and the liberated thinking is something which has just started in, in India, but it's happening in very, very small pockets. And to me, the, uh, you know, the, there are great examples of models that you know, we have picked from the West and are, imp and are deploying them in India, which is a great phase one of, of the growth. The next phase of growth is essentially going to come from when we can create products of our own that we have imagined ourselves and are willing to take them out into the world. And that requires a very different level of you know, uh, mind space and thinking. To me, the, you know, to me, somebody very nicely put it, that um, you know, the, Sil the Silicon Valley in the West has created solutions and products for the first billion people. India and similar countries would create products and solutions for the next six billion people. Got it. And if we were to be able to uh, do that, I think while I see a lot of change within the entrepreneurial community, in, uh, you know, where entrepreneurs are already starting to think a little differently and, and imagine world differently, I think a lot more push needs to happen in the investing community because they're still living in the world of pattern recognition, which needs to, they need to move away from. So I think the multiple entities that need, meet, need to move together, some needs a little bit more push than the others. Great, so you know, more uh, tolerance for failure and resilience there, uh, six billion to come, <laughs> and uh, I think the uh, investor community, yeah. uh, wanting them to have a m mindset that's much more open. How about you, Rohit, anything <clears throat> that you, at Snapdeal, what are you all looking at and admiring in the valley? Sure. So, you know, I think I'll talk about both the things, you know, both stuff uh, that the Valley needs to know about India, as well as the stuff that we can learn from the Valley and change in our own country. I think one of the most important thing that every, it's, it's becoming more and more obvious in every part of the world, is that four years back or five years back or six years back, India was a promise. As of today, India is already happening. Right. It's one of, it's the second largest internet market in the world. It's growing like no tomorrow. There are companies that are getting created in India which are changing, spe changing people's lives 
in a very meaningful way. It's no longer, you know, one of those things where a few guys are running a startup and, you know, they're doing their own thing, but the, but the consumer on the street doesn't notice. As of today, whether, you know, it's Paytm, in Mobi, with our company, change is getting, getting seen by consumers, by merchants, and it's starting, starting to impact their lives in reality. You know, we have given, we are a marketplace. Many businesses sell online on our platform. You know, there was this uh, small manufacturer based out of Surat, who used to, you know, he was very poor because he used to manufacture and, you know, take, take his product on a cycle, sell it to different shops and come back. And, you know, he was le leading a life of constant struggle for many, many years. Got it. Since the last few years, when he has started selling online, he now owns a car and sends his kids to, uh, for education to UK, which is great of, you know, how technology companies and uh, uh, startups are now changing lives of people. And, you know... Out of time completely? Five minutes? Okay. Over the, over the next five years, I think just digital consumption in India is going to be a $350 billion market. And that's a very large market for any scale. So I think that's becoming more and more obvious to everyone and it's, it's important for everyone here to know that. What we can learn uh, from the Valley back in India is actually quite similar to what Vijay, uh, Vijay and Naveen mentioned as well. You know, uh, I got married back in 2009 when entrepreneurship was still very early in India. And uh, this was still very, very early days and entrepreneur, as Vijay put it out, you know, was looked as the last option for people when you don't get anything else. And I remember how much trouble I went through to get married. I just <laughs> it was far harder than convincing investors to invest in our company, to convince my wife's parents that I'm okay, I'll take care of That's her. well said, since you've raised billions and you know, you've done it in multiple rounds. <laughs> so one, one last question for you, Vijay. Please represent the panel because we've run out of time. You know, Prime Minister Modi will be here shortly. Amitabh Kant talked about, uh, uh, Mr. Amitabh Kant talked about 10 years, tax-free holiday. You know, Mr. Modi talked this morning at Facebook about, you know, ease of business. You know, any big ask from an entrepreneurial point of view of the Prime Minister? I think uh, the best part is that we have a Prime Minister who understands that te technology is valuable and entrepreneurship is valuable to the country. But I am afraid the rest of the governance rest of the government, whether they are bureaucrats, whether they are people who implement taxes in the country, whether they are people who implement law and order in the country, have equal acknowledgement of it. I, I really wish the kind of excitement and attention and learning our Prime Minister shows, his team below also acknowledges that and come up, comes up to that. I think that is what I would have a single expectation from him. Awesome. Hey, a big round of applause for our very resilient entrepreneurs in spite of a very trying environment. Thank you very much, thank you. Rohit, and Naveen, and Vijay. Thank yeah. you. No, we, we, should, we should say one more thing. I think uh, last, uh, you said that what is the message that we want to give back to Silicon Valley from India? I, and Rohit put it very well that India is happening. And this is time for you to come back to India. This is the time for you to <laughs> Chalo Bharat India. Chalo Bharat. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen.